Hi everyone and welcome to Alliance Live, the online information and learning portal showcasing examples of innovation and integrated working taking place across Scotland within health and social care. We continue the series of these 30 minute webinars focusing on a consultation on the next Glasgow Children's Services Plan presented by Susie Scott, everyone's children's manager at Glasgow Council for the Voluntary Service or GCVS and Vince Henry, the Glasgow City Health and Social Care Partnership Lead Officer for the Children's Services Plan. Finally, as the panelists deliver their presentations, we invite the audience to pose questions using the chat box, which can be found in the toolbar at the bottom of your screen. This will make up the questions for the Q&A session, which will follow on from the presentations and bring our webinar to a close. So without further delay, passing over to Vince and Susie. Hi. So we're going to start off by just giving you a little outline of some of the background. This is the second Glasgow Children's Services Plan. Um, and um, we, we want to tell you a little bit first about what we said in the first one and where we hope to be going um, from that. Um, the, 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 the first Children's Service Plan um, talked about Glasgow's ambition for children and said that we want every child and young person to achieve their full potential and contribute positively to communities um, throughout their lives. Um, and um, that really is about trying to make sure that all young people um, uh, get all the services they need to make sure that they can grow up happy and healthy um, in Scotland. Um, if we look at some of the background for children and young people, we can see that Glasgow's population is a little bit different to the rest of Scotland. Um, compared to Scotland as a whole, children and young people in Glasgow are much more likely to be living in poverty much more likely to be from an ethnic minority household and much more likely to be living in overcrowded conditions. Um, but they're less likely to be achieving um, five standard grades um, or more um, from education. The other indicators um, are reasonably um, on a par, but it does make Scot Glasgow um, a bit more distinctive um, than the rest of Scotland. The Children's Service Plan is really about um, the services that children um, get um, that are controlled by um, the council, the health board and others. So we've got services that all children and people get like education and healthcare. We've got optional services that people can use like um, youth clubs, holiday activities, libraries, sports clubs. And then we've got specialist services for um, children and young people with greater needs, um, like supporting children with disabilities or um, a, a chronic conditions. The provision of children's services is from a whole range of different organizations. Glasgow City Council, for example, provides education and social work service. The health service provides everything from GP to hospital services for young people. Um, Police Scotland have a role um, in um, community safety and crime. Glasgow Life have a role in providing libraries, sports facilities, um, museums and that kind of thing. And there are a whole host of charities and community organizations who deliver um, local services in the communities, everything from parent and toddler groups um, through to youth clubs and other sorts of services. And then there are agencies like um, the, um, the Children's Reporter Panel um, who um, manage um, the Children's Panel for uh, referrals where ch uh, children have been in difficulties. Hi, I'm Vincent Henry. I'll do the next part of the presentation. In the last Children's Services Plan, we 
took the, the vision that Susie mentioned earlier on and translated it into five strategic priorities that we hoped would help deliver the, the vision. The first one was that the 2017-20 plan was the, the last one and we're coming to the end of that and that's why we have to generate a new one. The priorities in the last plan were that we wanted to keep children safe from harm. We wanted to make sure that they're healthy and happy. We wanted to get the right support for families by putting early intervention in place. We wanted to prepare children in life for work by raising their attainment and improve the life for children and young people who are care experienced. Uh, the, the, there were other priorities mentioned in the plan that, in terms of respecting children's rights and, and taking child poverty into account, but the, the five strategic priorities that we, were, we set aims to deliver on, the concrete aims were, were those five there. Um, on the last plan, the Scottish Government gave us some feedback, said that we, we lacked in, in certain areas, and those were that we didn't use the dialogue or the discourse of adverse childhood experiences. That's a categorization of negative experiences children can, can have in their lives. And the Scottish Government are, are prioritizing them just now, so that we didn't use them. We incorporate topics like neglect and uh, families who suffer drug and alcohol uh, problems. And these are things that are targeted in the plan, but we didn't use that particular uh, narrative and the Scottish Government said we should. We also didn't put targets that should be achieved within the three years or site baselines for the things that we wanted to do. That could be, for example, the amount of children who are in care or number of children participating in sport or, or visiting their GP. We didn't set baselines and set targets for them uh, in the, the plan and they suggested that we should. It's been argued that in adverse childhood experiences and targets achievable, that it may not actually necessarily be helpful to, to make them quite so concrete. But one area that we did want to pursue was increase the, the emphasis in children's rights in the plan. The last one that didn't have a lot of emphasis in the discourse of children's rights and didn't mention Article 12. That's to do with children's voice and, and uh, respecting children participation. So in this uh, uh, plan, we want to emphasise that much more. So our priorities for the next plan for 2020-23, we want to review the five strategic priorities I mentioned. We want to develop the, the partnership across the health and social care partnership further. We, we have good examples of partnership working, for example, the citywide forum itself. We have good examples already, but we want to develop it further. And part of that will actually be our work together on, on the children's services plan. And a big part of that will be our consultation and engagement. We've developed a strategy that, that will incorporate a lot of partners, both statutory and third sector, and we're going to work together to deliver the consultation and engagement process and deliver the plan, uh, write it together and deliver it on time. And finally, another um, uh, aim for the, the next Children's Services Plan is to make it more accessible to those who, uh, for whom it's designed. The last plan was very much written uh, in a format that was accessible to professionals, but not for children and young people. And this time we're going to generate at least a version that will be much better for them. Uh, by way of explanation, I'm going to go through the five priorities and see, uh, I, I gave a quick definition, but in, in practice, well, the, the aims that each priority had, I'll, I'll give a quick run through what they did and, and showed some of the, in detail some of the progress that we made against them to give a bit of a context of what they actually meant in practice. Um, the keeping children safe priority, a big step forward for that was the Child Protection Committee. That's a partnership group that has a, the lead for things like neglect, child sexual exploitation, and some social work recording, recording when it comes to keeping children safe. Um, they, in the last three years, have improved neglect practice with a new assessment procedure that's available to social workers, third sector and health professionals that's going to improve the chances of identifying neglect, uh, children who are at risk of neglect earlier. For child sexual exploitation, the training has not been for professionals, but for children themselves. Children in secondary school have been given uh, training on how to identify and protect themselves and their peers from potential signs of child, uh, child sexual exploitation they might see. And social workers have been trained to improve their record keeping to have better uh, recognition and early assessment of children who've had significant negative events in their life that could be leading to a crisis. Uh, something that's outside the Child Protection Committee's remit is the children who are the highest 
the level of uh, risk you need in Glasgow the, the children, to keep children safe from harm who are the most risky. The intensive support and monitoring service and your women's centre have, have come together to rationalise resources and help provide intensive support to the, the most risky and needy children. Uh, the next priority is the healthy and resilient children, which is about nurturing children and keeping them happy. So the developments in that area have been to promote healthy lifestyle choices. That, that can be things like there's a new breastfeeding service in the northeast. We've got a universal pathway that assesses children who are at, before nursery and school age to make sure that they're developing okay. And we also have, for older children, the uh, development in Sandyford Sexual Health Service that's making it more accessible and better tailored to children who are in high school. For promotion of play, fun and sport, there's been a lot of investment between Glasgow Life and Life Changes Trust into more money for particularly care experienced young people to have access to sport and to, to attend sport and widen their, broaden their horizons in those areas. The reduction in poverty, there have been some very good concrete steps in that with the the holiday hunger programme that's given school meals for children who are eligible over the course of school holidays as well as in term time to make sure that they're not going hungry just because they're, they're on holiday. And the Healthier Wealthier Children Service helps families apply for benefits to which they're entitled but may not know they are. And that was effect in 2018-19. They help families actually deliver three million pounds worth of benefits to them to which they were entitled but didn't know to help children in poverty, uh, move for, to help the families of children in poverty. And for mental health, there's also been an increase in the number of CAMS therapists. That's the Child and Adolescent Mental Health Service across Glasgow. Family support, one of our aims in that was the named person process, but that's actually been taken out of the legislation. So that's something that we've not had to emphasize. What we did emphasize instead was the family support strategy. That was a, a strategy, an overarching strategy to deliver um, coordinate and deliver services in Glasgow to do with uh, supporting families and helping them before they reach crisis. A large consultation was carried out between statutory and third sector, third sector agencies to see what the services should be delivered and how they should be delivered across Glasgow. And that's been aligned with a commissioning and funding strategy to help deliver them and get, uh, get them in place as soon as possible under the one, as I said, uh, overarching strategy. And the Glasgow Together Consortium has been a way that the third sector agencies have actually started working together to deliver services in a coordinated way to families before they reach a crisis point and hopefully save money longer term for family support. With raising attainment, uh, raising attainment has not, is, is about helping all children develop the, themselves in school, at school, of school age to help them develop to move towards work and be happier adults when they move out. So that's, it's wider than just the academic, but the, the steps forward in that have been, the Glasgow has now got nurture units in far more schools and, and LGBT youth programs have been rolled out across more schools in Glasgow, which means more children who need that sort of social and emotional support are getting it to maintain the places of schools rather than be at risk of dropping out. Care experienced children and young people are, uh, get more benefit, particularly in high school, because every high school in Glasgow now has a, an MCR Pathways worker in place who, who acts as a mentor for care experienced children and young people, help them uh, sustain their places in school and move on to positive, positive destinations after it. And the, the work been done to close the attainment gaps, hopefully narrow the gap between those areas, schools and areas of uh, deprivation um, have, have been the, the Pupil Equity Fund, which I'm sure a lot of people know about, and also the Improvement Challenge which is put money into schools uh, with, with greater deprivation to help children achieve in areas, not just the academic, but things like uh, the Duke of Edinburgh Awards or achieving sport so that they know that they can aspire to, uh, with support, achieve more once they leave school as well. And the fifth priority is, is helping care experienced children, young people. That's any child who's looked after or accommodated at home or away from home. The last three years have seen a residential care review that's helped to uh, bring online the, the new uh, series of, of children's residential units that are better attuned to the needs of, care, of accommodated young people. There's uh, a, new, a new service called CLES that helps children who children and young people who are moving, af, moving on beyond care experience to move into positive destinations of work and college beyond care. The Young People's Champions Group was a specific goal that was set that 
we now have a standing group of uh, children and young people who are care experienced who come together uh, to discuss issues that are impo both important to them and that they've been asked to consult on. Uh, any care experienced issues, or any issues that might affect care experienced young people, they're our first port of call. Um, and they, they, they'll be supported for three years and our funding application is going to continue further on into the future uh, so that they get a direct access to consult to us. And finally, the Children Here and Improvement Partnership is a uh, as a multi-agency partnership that's working together to improve all aspects of children's hearings for any child who might be involved in that. So as, as Vinnie said, children's rights um, was in the background of the last plan and the plan certainly said that it would respect children's rights such as the right to health care, education and, and to be safe. Um, but um, it didn't put a great deal of emphasis on the children's rights to have their views considered um, and taken into account on matters that affect them. And certainly the children's service plan, um, you can argue, is something that will affect them because it will affect how services are planned um, for the next three years. So that's something um, that we definitely have already started to um, look to see that we can make sure that we get um, that voice heard and I'll talk a little bit more about that um, in a couple of minutes. The other thing that um, the, the, the last plan mentioned but um, you, you know just as a, as a background said that child poverty was an issue and there's been a lot of work done on child poverty in, in, in the last three years um, including um, the the, the Council and the Health and Social Care Partnership developing its own Child Poverty Action Plan, but also a lot of work through um, uh, child poverty groups, which have led to um, a, much, a lot of emphasis on the cost of the school day and the cost of the school holiday, and making sure that um, children and young people don't miss out because they haven't got the money um, to do things. And uh, Vinny's already mentioned the Holiday Hunger Programme, which obviously is delivered by um, well over 100 third sector organisations in the city. Um, and child poverty is going to continue to be um, an underlying theme throughout the next children's service plan as well, because we don't expect it to go away. We'd like it to go away. We don't expect it to go away um, anytime soon. So where we are just now in terms of producing the new plan um, is carrying out this big consultation process. Um, we want to consult with children, young people and families um, as part of the process and we've, uh, we've recently uh, launched that. We're asking um, all the agencies that work with children and young people, um, that's schools, um, uh, health visitors, um, people from, from, from Glasgow Life, people from the third sector, to talk to the children and young people that they work with um, and get their views. Um, we're looking for views from naught to, to 25. Um, so it's a very broad set, uh, spectrum and we were, we're wanting views from right across the whole of the community from um, children and young people with disabilities, from different ethnic backgrounds, from the LGBT community, um, just because they might have different perspectives um, on what services um, are required. And obviously we want to consult with third sector organisations, voluntary sector and community organisations themselves to get their views on what um, they think the next ch children's services priorities should be. So if you'd like to get involved um, within the consultation, um, we've got a number of ways that you can get involved. If you want to, um, to contribute your own views, you can, uh, we've got a, a standard survey 
um, that you can fill or, or you can just send an email and tell us what you think. Um, uh, uh, if you want to help us consult with children and young people, we've got a pack of materials um, that will help people do that. And what we're saying to people is, here's some materials that might help you, but what we'd really like you to do is go out and talk to the children and young people that you work with, um, get their views in whatever way you think suits them best, be as creative as you like, um, uh, you know, pictures, photos, video clips, poems, short stories. Um, it just, it doesn't just have to be a written narrative, we'll accept a whole range of different ways um, of people expressing their views in the way that they want to express their views. Um, and you don't have to stick either to the five priority topics. Um, if there's some burning issue um, that, um, you, that you want to talk about, whether that's a personal experience or whether that's um, something affecting people that you work with, you, you know, you're very welcome to um, tell us about that um, too. So some of the questions that we're asking um, uh, in the consultation, but as I say, you don't have to stick to these, are whether you think the priorities are the right ones, what you think are the most important priorities, what's important about issues, what things could we do, that's we collectively, the council, the health board, the police, the sector, uh, do to improve services, um, and what other services would you like to see improved? So thank you, Susie and Vince. That brings us to the end of the presentation section and on to the Q&A portion of the webinar. Um, so far, we've got one question uh, that's came in from Twitter, but please feel free to uh, continue to post any questions that you might have. Um, so the, the question that we have came, had come in was, so what's your strategy to reach the harder to reach groups uh, within the consultation process? Um, as I said, what, what we've asked um, organisations to do, we, we feel that um, organisations who already work with children and young people are the best place to reach people that perhaps normal consultations haven't reached. Um, and particularly third sector organisations are perhaps working with some of those more hard to reach groups, children who perhaps are not attending school or uh, not attending, uh, you know, very regularly children with disabilities, children from, um, a, a, you know, a variety of different backgrounds. And we've had um, a lot of enthusiasm from, from those organisations who, who um, are going to go out and talk to, to, to young people. Um, and we're going to also, um, we're developing um, uh, things with the children and young people themselves. Um, they, they, they want to do things like a Twitter survey. Mm. Um, and uh, we said, well, you know, can you help us do that? Because they know their audience. Mm. Um, so they, uh, you know, they're going to do things like that. So we're, we're trying to, to, to try a whole range of different things. Um, and we'll be monitoring what comes in as we go along. And if we feel, um, that, um, compared to what we know about the population as a whole, that we're missing things, we'll be, um, you know, going out to organizations, um, and, 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 and you know, pushing a bit harder to try and make sure that we we do get a good representation from right across the community. Yeah, we don't want to be at all prescriptive and to asking people how to engage with the, the children and young people and their families that you know. That, that's a big part of the strategy is we've been prescriptive in the past and it ended up asking the wrong things of too small a group of people. So what we said is we want to capitalise on existing relationships, we want to utilise a partnership to its fullest and ask people to, to engage with the children and young people and the, the, that they know in the way that they know the children and the young people might respond to. Um, and, and hopefully, as Susie said, we will capture some of the views of 
they they're harder to reach children and young people. Um, that some of the responsibility for that will fall on statutory agencies who 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 are working with them and other ones that might be based with third sector have already good relationships with. But we certainly want to uh, include everyone. That's the that's absolutely the motivation behind the strategy. Thank you. So we've had a question come in from Jean Inglis. How would the plan intend to increase awareness of other services for children? Clearly, MCR Pathways is very valuable and effective for children who attend and cope at school, but the impact of in tandem's community-based mentoring has not been mentioned. Forgive me, the MCR Pathways was one example of something that has been applied uniformly across the city. There's lots of terrific work being done by third sector agencies. It's just it's, they're not necessarily uniformly available across the city. So this was just a way that we were step forward because it was in place to an extent before as a test of change and then it's been rolled out. There's been lots of, there are lots of terrific third sector agencies and fantastic work being done. Well, we're not in a place right now in this context to list everybody who's doing really good work. Um, and, but we would like for anyone who's got knowledge of particular third sector agencies who might be in a place to, to support children and young people or have a service that, they, that they're offering to contact us to potentially talk to young people and be part of the consultation. Um, we'll, but there are also so many uh, third sector agencies that, that we're not necessarily going to be listing them all in the plan because it's strategic. So we can't, we won't necessarily, we certainly won't be listing all the statutory agencies and the, the departments and teams who are part of it too. So uh, we actually hope to not be prioritising any agencies. We'd hope to sort of put a narrative in the plan that would more uh, incorporate everyone rather than single out anyone in particular. MCR pathways won't be mentioned in this plan by name, very likely. That was just an example. Yeah, I, I, I think as, as Vince said, I think um, thinking has moved on since since the last plan, where um, uh, if the third sector was mentioned at all, it, it was usually at the end of the sentence that said "and third sector," and third sector, um, and um, you know what we're working towards this time is um, a plan in which. The third sector is very much seen as part of the partnership um, uh, on an equal standing, if you like, with the, the um, uh, you know, education services and, 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 and health services as providing a really vital part um, in, in the lives of children and young people. As, as, as Vinnie says, it's, it's not going to be possible to, to list all of them, but we've done a great deal of work um, in the last three years in mapping um, what those services are. And we certainly hope as part of the work going forward, um, that mapping of what work of what um, services are available um, will, you know, form some of the, the implementation of the next plan. Yeah, yeah personally, I, the, the participation and support for the development of the next plan from the third sector has been terrific so far. There's some statutory agencies have been participating, of course, but the, the bulk of the work has been done by third sector and it would be, uh, it's absolutely the intention to reflect that in the plan. We'll, we'll collaborate on producing a narrative that, that, that's fair to everyone and uh, it will reflect the work put in by everyone and not have it in a sort of like lean towards the world, particularly statutory social work type agencies because they, they, they've got a big budget and they're in control of it. That would be entirely unfair and not reflective of the nature of the partnership that we're developing. Thank you. So we've got uh, one more by the looks of things. Uh, to what degree has the United Nations Conventions for the Rights of the Child been used to inform the services plan? Well, the, the last plan did incorporate children's rights in as much as it was, it was built around the Shinari indicators, which are themselves based on the United Nations Conventions of the Rights of the Child. That said, children's voice wasn't a part of it. It was, it was entirely remiss in the last plan to not incorporate children's voice on what the strategy is. What we did do is look at some of the reviews and consultations we've had in areas that were part of children's services about, for example, residential reviews and specific service reviews. But we didn't ask them about what should be the strategy. We had information that, that was relevant 
but we didn't ask them about this. What should Glasgow be spending its money on? What should Glasgow be prioritising as a partnership? So this time what we want to do is very much emphasise Article 12, which is about children's voice and respect and their participation. And so the, the, the real, th what's going to be driving this plan, what the thrust behind it is going to be a massive, co sorry, a massive step up in consultation. We've not done it yet. We don't know how, how well we're going to realise this, but we're, we're very much striving to have as many children and young people across Glasgow, and it has been alluded to, a, the harder to reach children, every demographic represented as best we can, to have it reflective of the real views of ch the children and young people that, that will not only affect, but hopefully serve. So we're, we're, we really want to, we're really focusing on Article 12 this time because we think it's the best way to realise a plan that serves everybody, and serve the people for, to whom we intend it. Great, and we had a, a question coming there. We'll make that our, our final question. Um, if, third, if the third sector are recognised as contributing to consultation and development of children's services planning, will the recognition of third sector knowledge and expertise be reflected in adequate resource, resource allocation to the third sector? Well, I have to say, unfortunately, Nick promoted me earlier on. He said I'm lead officer in charge of the children's services plan. What well, actually I'm is coordinating the children's services plan. I, I, I'm not in charge of budgets, so I can't say exactly uh, exactly what the ramifications will be but we would hope that like the children's like the family support um strategy we would uh, link commission commissioning and funding to what the to the priorities that come out of the renewed plan so we will be working together to to interpret what is needed across glasgow for children's services link it to commission and funding and put the resources into third sector uh, for their sustainability and hopefully it, there would be an emphasis on more sustainable, longer term, secure security for third sector because we know that they're absolutely integral to the delivery of the services. And there's a move across the council and the partnership towards using third sector and their expertise in, in delivering it. So I th that's the way that we're moving. But only time will tell. Okay, thank you very much. That brings us to the end of our webinar. Thank you, Susie and Vince, for delivering the fantastic presentation and answering those questions. We hope it's provided some insight and takeaways to bring to your own organisations. So before we go, we'd just like to draw your attention to some other uh, information taking part within the Alliance. And uh, if, it's, uh, if you're interested in taking part in a webinar yourself for Alliance Live, then the contact details are up on the screen. Uh, if you have any further questions for Vince and Susie, we can pass them on using the email address, which is also displayed. Finally, a big thank you to everyone once again who registered and took part in the webinar. We hope to, that you join us for our next one on the 3rd of December with Dr. Hannah Tweed and Dr. D Diane Feakston, who will be presenting My Support, My Choice, a joint research project around self-directed support and how it is working in practice for people accessing social care across Scotland. More information and sign up can be accessed through our website.